Hi everybody, it's Anne with Art on the Creek. Thanks for tuning in and happy holidays once again, 2023. I'm so glad you're here with me in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. Those of you who are regular viewers will notice that our wall is kind of blank back there. Well, I took everything down because I was completely out of room and we need to refill it. So let the cycle begin. We're gonna refill the wall again with all the things that we paint here on the channel. Uh, today though, uh, many of you know that I follow along with the Monday Live by Sennelier. Um, I like to do that because chances are uh, Yves-Marie will paint something that really stretches my comfort zone and helps me to grow as an artist. And uh, even as an instructor, I'm always looking for something that will push my envelope. And today, you betcha, there was a lesson that really did push me. And um, well, what do you get when you combine a portrait, really wide brushes, and uh, really big paper? <laughs> Let's find out. Before we continue though, please subscribe to Art on the Creek if you haven't done so already by clicking on that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell too so that you'll always know when I launch a new tutorial or a product review. Of course, if you do enjoy content like this, make sure that you give it a like, leave a comment, or share it with your friends. If you'd really like to take your art skills to the next level, I would encourage you to consider a membership with Art on the Creek. When you're a member or patron of my channel, your membership includes an extensive library of tutorials covering drawings and paintings of a variety of subjects, not just beautiful Colorado, and also in many different art media. You'll have full and unlimited access to an ever-growing member's library of tutorials and reviews, as well as the opportunity to receive guided feedback and critique from me. And also, you'll have direct input into which art technique or medium you'd like to learn more about as a member, as well as access to free art supplies. All of that and more is included in your membership, and it's all very conveniently right here on YouTube. There is a link in the description below that will go over all the membership details. But if you still have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to help you out. Now, let's move on to today's subject, shall we? You know, these uh, Sennelier Monday Lives often post photos that just grab my attention. And this one was so intense that I really felt like I wanted to paint this portrait. Uh, because if it were just me doing it, I would have gone about it entirely differently. So I really did learn quite a few things. I will put links in the description, not only to that photo from Pixabay, but also to the Sennelier Live channel. And uh, it's actually, it's the Sennelier Colors channel. And what you do is you go to their homepage, click on the Live tab, and then you can see all of these Monday Lives. And you don't have to do them live. You can uh, re replay them, do them whenever you want. I'm getting out some brushes here that I think I'm going to use, but I ended up not using all of them. Uh, this first one that I'm showing you here is uh, Winsor Newton Professional Sable, and that one is uh, half inch. And then after that one, I have my three quarter inch stroke brush, the Taclon brush from Princeton Neptune. Uh, it's a, excuse me, a Princeton Snap. And then the one and a half inch Motler from Princeton Neptune. I ended up using that one quite a bit. I've also got a silver black velvet oval, and that I want to say is a three quarter inch oval. And then I've also got, just checking, yeah, three quarter inch. And then I've also got a quill brush, a number two quill brush by Tintoretto. So I think this is all I'm going to use, but then I ended up pulling out one more brush, a number three round uh, protege brush by Turkel. So when it was all said and done, I did use one, two, three, four brushes on this one. Um, so I will put links to in the description to the brushes that I did use. Now check out my way of propping my paper up. <laughs> you can, you don't need an easel, just use whatever you've got that's pretty stable. So I had my uh, palette of Caran d'Ache gouache and two mason jars with some salt in them. So after I got my drawing done, and I don't have footage of that part, sorry, I just wanted to make sure that all of my facial features were in the right line. And you can see I've I measured off the eye there, kind of estimated that with a pencil, and then compared it to the other eye, and they were the same. But the bridge of the nose on this subject is wider than the distance, uh, the width of an eye. So uh, I wanted to make sure that that was, that was set up that way. I guess that's the first advice I want to give you guys when you're working on portraits. Make sure that your drawing is proportionally correct. There are tools out there that you can get. There are gauges and you can set them uh, for a certain distance. It's like a caliper on one end, it's narrow, and the other end, you can uh, it expands wider. And depending on where you put that axis, you can uh, put in different measurements, different percentages, and um, enlarge or reduce things accordingly, and keep those 
measurements correct. So, and here the, from this point on, the rest of the video will be uh, will be sped up. And I realized that my uh, my first line there for the hood was way off of where I put my face. So, this is kind of that part of the hoodie where it uh, folds under and makes that hem, that edging on the hoodie. So now that I've got that situated, I'm going to draw the sides of the hood because you know, as always, always, whenever I'm painting. I look at the reference photo and I think, okay, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to do that. And then what will happen is I will, as I'm painting, see something else and realize, oh, that's actually this way. So that is another thing that uh, I will give you a tip with your powers of observation. Really make sure that you look at things thoroughly and have a good plan before you get started. Now this one, I did have a good plan. Um, the one thing that I struggled with was mixing enough paint. Um, this was so fun though to let that paint run down. This is just not the way I normally paint. I love painting wet on wet and I love figuring out all these different ways to uh, to make portraits. I've taken a lot of lessons in portraiture over the past year and I'm going to continue to do that again in 2024 because my goal is to be able to really show you guys how to paint a good portrait but I feel like I need more practice first. <laughs> So at any rate, you can practice along with me in the meantime. Um, really having fun mixing the skin tones here. I just use primary colors to do that. I used a lemon yellow and let me see what was the red I used. I used ultramarine blue and then I used a, uh, a PB19 which is the Jackson's Carmine. Uh, the watercolors that I'm using are all from Jackson's today and um, really love this set. I believe they are made by Sennelier, but don't quote me on that. That's just a rumor that I heard. But what I like about mixing those three primaries for my, uh, for my skin tones is that you can go in and really adjust. If you want something darker or uh, more in the shadow, add more blue. If it needs to be pinker, add a little bit more red, uh, more warm, add some yellow. So just by adjusting those primaries, you can come up with a really excellent, uh, excellent skin tone palette for yourself. And of course, there's many other ways to mix skin tones, but um, I have found that this one is quite successful no matter, no matter what the skin tone is. You just water it down as you need to, to create uh, paler or darker complexions. And let's see, I've got the basis for his, uh, his mustache in there. And I decided, you know, after I mixed that dark for the mustache with the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, I really wanted to add some green around here. I just felt like this needed green, which is so a, a, a strange thought that I had because I just don't really pull for green that much when I'm painting uh, freely like this. And then I thought, you know, I really like the red that's in his lips. So I want to echo that elsewhere in the painting. And as you can see that uh, the pigment in his face, uh, as watercolor does, is getting quite a bit lighter, um, the, the, the paint, and that's as it's drying. So what I wanted to do was let it dry, and, and I went ahead and I used the heat tool here because I was noticing that I was having just a little bit of issues with um, inconsistent water levels, um, and that is something that I'm not used to painting something this big. So that's something I can tell you with it. My advice for you there is just keep practicing. Um, I'm used to mixing enough paint for something very, very small. And this, like I said, is large. It's a large painting. It's 12 inches by 16 inches. And I rarely will paint something this big. What I usually do when I buy blocks this big is I will cut them into fourths. So this one would make uh, six inches by, by eight inches. And I really love painting in that size. That's just about my favorite size. But this was just, I thought, okay, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to see what happens. And I'm just going to try. So now after um, I've got the got his face dry there and I've gone in with the next, uh, next wash on top of it, I'm kind of trying to lift off color, trying to lift off some highlights just to make sure that I've got all of the light shining on his face the way that it was in the reference photo somewhat. It's pretty much the light is across his cheeks and nose there. And then of course his eyes stand out so dramatically from underneath that hood of the hoodie. And these lips, I had so much fun doing the lips. So I, when I mix natural tones for lips, I will do that same thing with the skin tone pigment. So I mixed a red, yellow, blue and just really made it a little more intense. And then you can see I'm using that number three round to fill this in. And now I'm gonna go in and lift some off. That's one of the ways that I have found that really works well for me 
in doing portraiture is painting something on and then lifting it off. And that's another tip I can give you is that if you wanted to, uh, to make a highlight in something and leave that natural tone underneath it, of course, just paint down your wash and then lift off what, uh, what you don't need. And nine times out of 10, it works for me. And if you play with it enough, I'm pretty sure that you'll get that technique to work for you as well. So now I'm going in with a mix of the ultramarine and burnt sienna. And that is what I did his mustache in. And as soon as I got his mustache on, I felt like, okay, we need to darken that area around his face, get more shadow going under his hood. I wanted to keep the yellow across the top of the fold of the hoodie, because what I really wanted to do there was to keep the light coming from the top, from, uh, from over his head. So now we get to the eyes and what I wanted to do here was first put in the shadows. So I just painted a little bit of that pigment mix again that I had for the skin tone and I made it just a little bit more blue, a little bit more purple and went in the corners and along the top. And then I came in with just a wet brush and smoothed that out. So most of the pigment was on the top and the corners and that way I was able to establish the eyes themselves. And now I'm going in with kind of a burnt sienna uh, for the iris and then uh, the black is that ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna mix. And now I'm going in with that number three and lifting off some of that uh, from the iris because what I really want is to add some yellow in there to get it just a little bit more dimensional in the eyes. So um, lifted that off, put some yellow in there, and then I went and added a little bit of seaming on the hood fold there. And this is what resulted. So lots of fun for me, lots of things to learn. I look at this and I see where, um, where I have room for improvement. I look for, I look at this painting and I see a lot of wins and that's what I want for you guys. If you watch anything on my channel, anything on YouTube, anywhere, when you follow along, when you paint along, find those moments where you win, find those moments where you've had successes, take note of those, be proud of those because you worked hard. And I hope that everyone is getting ready for a very busy holiday season. And from here on out, for the end of the year, we're going to be painting some holiday themed things. So I hope you stay tuned and continue to enjoy what's on my channel. Take care, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.